I think the the biggest benefit is having a substantial weight loss of 10% in a population that it's notoriously hard to help with weight loss and achieving that on top of improvements in other comorbidities like lowering blood sugar, lowering blood pressure, cholesterol, and uh, improving the cardiovascular risk factors that we know about, like CRP, for example, and also while improving the quality of life. So that, for me, is sort of the <laughs> the drug that hits it all and uh, helps patients not from just one standpoint, but from from a holistic standpoint. So you had a weight loss of approximately 9.6%. And then in um, in step one, it was more like 15%. Is there a particular reason why it's less in your trial? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so patients with diabetes have a much, much harder time losing weight. Well, we don't fully understand why that is, that there's some potential explanations that it has to do with what other medications they're on to treat diabetes, it might have to do with how much glucose they're excreting, and then when they stop excreting that because their blood sugar gets better, all those calories are retained. Um, there, there are many potential explanations for that and not one good one, but bottom line, patients with diabetes have a very hard time losing weight. On the opposite side, they very much need to lose weight because uh, with weight loss, we know that their diabetes improves, their other comorbidities improve. So weight loss for patients with diabetes is really the quintessential um, intervention for their overall health. So a 10% weight loss in this population is actually fantastic. It's twice as much as any other medication that is approved for obesity has done in clinical trials. And uh, while it it, uh, in absolute numbers doesn't seem as high as step one or step three, um, which enrolled only patients without diabetes, in the context of diabetes, this is a phenomenal result. Assuming the higher dose of semiglutide got approved, where, when would you use the higher dose and when would you prefer to use the lower dose in people with diabetes? So... Um, it's an interesting conversation, and uh, it's something that uh, actually I'm trying to fight at a more conceptual level because um, uh, for reasons that I think are not very physiologic but more have to do with the regulatory and cost and how insurance companies cover this dichotomy between between a diabetes dose and obesity dose uh, is now present in, in the previous drug, which is liraglutide and is going to be present for this drug as well and potentially in others in the future. And it's really a very um, artifactual uh, differentiation, right, between the two dosages because our patients with diabetes, like you said, most of them have obesity and they would benefit from the higher dose from a weight loss perspective. But I'll tell you sort of the background and how this happened to be. And that's because uh, for this medication, and it seems like for the class in general, there's a different dose response curve for glucose versus weight. So what I mean by that, as the dose goes up, the effect on blood sugar goes up. But at some point, just like with the effect of any drug, this plateaus or it becomes a smaller increment for a continuous increase in the dose. So the optimal dose for blood sugar lowering, it was found to be somewhere there in the 0.5 to 1, which means at that dose, most patients get the desired reduction in glycemia that you're looking for. But what has been noticed is that the dose response curve for weight loss, it's offset. And as you keep going up on the dose, they might not get a whole lot more improvement on glucose, they still get an improvement on glucose, but not incrementally that big. They do get a significant increment on the weight part. So that's why, that's how we ended up with these different dosages for different indications, even though, like you said, it's for the same patients. Um, so a dose of 2.4 was found to be optimal for weight loss. 
um, like it, it provides the best uh, benefit for the dose, while for the glucose, 0.5 to 1 dose, that it's, it's sort of the optimal point for most patients. Now, that being said, coming back to my patients with diabetes, um, my goal is to, um, when I treat patients with diabetes, I like to not only treat their blood sugar, which is sort of the consequence of their disease, but look at the patient more holistically and see why did they get diabetes to begin with. And in most of the cases, that will be because of the weight, and the weight causes the diabetes and many other comorbidities that we have. Therefore, in, at least in my practice and in my view, we should focus more on weight management in diabetes, and that will take care of both blood sugar, weight, and other comorbidities. And uh, we shouldn't just strictly focus on blood sugar, which we know it's good. It lowers microvascular complications, but it's even better when you're actually focusing on the root cause of the problem. So could you foresee the higher dose being most most frequently used in people with diabetes? I would definitely hope so. Uh, as I said, the challenges start to be more uh, logistical with the insurance companies oftentimes not wanting to cover for obesity treatment. Very counterintuitive, but unfortunately is the reality. Um, and that will be a limiting factor potentially, but you know, in a utopic world where you can treat patients the way you think it's right, then yes, I would, I would go for the full dose to treat the root cause of the problem. And um, do you get a dose response for the gastrointestinal side effects as well? So interestingly, not that much. So with a higher dose, there is slightly more gastrointestinal side effects, but it was way less than I expected. Uh, most people, if they have problems, they, I, I've, what I've noticed is that they tend to have problems when they start or up, upon the first titration. And most people, if they don't have problems in the beginning, they tend to tolerate it quite well as the dose continues to increase. Um, so there's not necessarily a, a, a dose response, but if it is, it's, it's very minimal to the point that it won't change how I treat. I do feel, having, having had a lot of experience with these drugs now, I do feel that preparing the patient adequately and uh, informing them on what they need to do and what they might expect, mitigating any side effects early goes a long way. And uh, in most cases, it's very well tolerated. And as you saw, very few patients actually stop because of the gastrointestinal side effects. 